Haha, <laughs> that looks really cute. Oh, I love it! You're listening to the Mike Cassidy Photography Podcast. It's your real world photography business masterclass with no BS and no magic shortcuts. Here's your host, Mike Cassidy. And boom goes the dynamite. Yeah. Howdy. My name is Michael, and I'm your neighbor. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the hoedown. I fell a little behind, huh, didn't I? I got busy. I told myself I'd, like, either go on a hiatus for a little bit through Christmas and put out a short episode that said, you know, I'll be back after the holidays, or maybe I decided I'll just trudge through it and make the time and... I decided to trudge through it and suddenly I realized it's been like two weeks, two and a half weeks or however since the last show and I didn't realize it was like that long. It's just like such a hectic time for me so I probably should have gone the the hiatus route but here I is. Now I've been on the go like pretty much nonstop for the past couple weeks, three weeks, four weeks like oh boy. You know and I have this mental issue that if I'm not on the go like nonstop that all these Christmas projects I'm working on like nothing's going to get done on time and people aren't going to get their photo books on time so I think part of the problem is I probably take on too much work during this time of year and I really I need to throttle it back a bit I think next year I'm not going to take so many so many uh, Christmas sessions and though good news is I think my last session for this year is on Wednesday I'm recording this late on Monday the 14th so I have like two days and that's it that's my final session for uh, for this year and I get to take a whole break I think for like a week and a half I think I don't know I think the 5th or the 3rd I, I start back up in, in January so uh, I get to recover for uh, about a week and a half before I uh, have to get back and and get back to work so it gives me a little bit of time to uh, um, to get caught up so and what have I been doing well just working like crazy and sitting here all day and working on photos and here's a good thing that uh to bring up is just make sure you're backing up your work um today after i ate dinner i sat down with lightroom and i was finished up one project and i'm like yes i'm going to move that folder into a uh, like an archive uh, hard drive that i have and uh lightroom just froze it just nothing would happen it just sat there for at least a minute i'm gonna say and then uh window popped up like an error message window from them do you want to send this issue to you know adobe and fill in what happened and nothing i couldn't reopen it every time i tried to restart it it was that this catalog is already open and i couldn't get into my pictures i turned off the computer and when i went to restart it it literally took almost four or five minutes to start the screen was black it just was not loading my window screen it was just sitting there and i was like oh no something really bad happened when i was trying to move those photos so just make sure you're backing your your stuff up because man when it comes to computers especially you know they're never going to stop working at a good time it's always going to be a bad time and I remember that happened to me a couple years ago, and I think it was Thanksgiving, three years ago maybe, and I was doing a bunch of Christmas sessions over Thanksgiving weekend, and I came home with cameras full of photos, and I went to load them in my computer, and my computer went, like it made a sound that no computer ever should make, and that was the end of that computer. I had to rush out and quick, like, get another one to offload all this work, and I bought the second computer, and started it and I think I started to copy all my stuff on there and that computer made a kind of and it died not even having it a few hours I had to return that one and exchange it for another so just make sure you have your stuff backed up that's all I'm gonna say and um, one thing I wanted to note about this episode is recorded this a week a couple months ago maybe sort of late in the summer and you'll hear me referencing you know the sudden drop in covid cases and how things seem to have leveled off so i just want you to be aware that this was recorded a while ago because now as we all know things have shot way 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 back up so uh that was sort of what was going on late in in summer 
and just keep that in mind when you hear us talking about that uh, a little bit. And other than that, it's just gotten very cold suddenly. We're having our first snow. I think it's due well the day of my last session. I think it's supposed to possibly start snowing on Wednesday, so that may even be a washout if we get a bunch of snow and it got really cold. And you know, this is the time of year. It makes me wish I was out west and. Speaking of out west, um, our guest is in the west. Today's guest is Sarah Spackman of Sarah Jessica Photography. And Sarah is a Western Western wedding photographer. She's a business educator and a self-proclaimed proclaimed crazy horse gal. And anyone who self-proclaims themselves crazy that is someone just for me. You know, as a crazy person myself, I completely understand. And I had a great time chatting with Sarah and we had a lot of fun and we talked a bit about Western weddings and her work and you know we were discussing some photos and I just want to make you know the links are down below for the photos that we were discussing so you can click on them and see what we were talking about it's fun to sort of follow along at home and you know she likes helping people with her marketing with their marketing and social media so we spent a good deal of time talking about creating your personal brand and getting yourself out there and how everybody needs to do more of that stuff and it's a good show you know, I'm uh, glad I met Sarah, and I have a feeling we'll be speaking again. So, what I can say is, go get your boots on, give this one a listen, and uh, as always, I like hearing from you. And you can connect with me online on Instagram at Mike Cassidy Podcast or via my email at Mike at the Photography Podcast dot show if you feel like reaching out to me. And thanks so much, and I'll see you on the next show. Yeehaw! This podcast and my website both focus on the goal of translating the art and business of photography and making it accessible and understandable to everyone. My goal is to provide the best content in photography for you, the listener. I've assembled a great team of photography guests and experts to make this happen. What I've chosen to do is create a subscriber model for my audience. If you value what I'm doing, you can become a member and support the show. In exchange, you'll receive benefits over and above what's available for free. The membership program includes episodes with complete, unabridged interviews with our guests, early episode access, participation in AMA episodes, and there's more. If you'd like to learn more now, head over to the photographypodcast.show forward slash subscribe. Now, without further delay, here's today's episode. But I thought, uh, you know, since you're out there in the in the wild west yeah i, th- I thought we <laughs> have some <laughs> is that appropriate or that's no that's amazing <laughs> oh i, I love it <laughs> get me in the mood right i feel good i, like, dum, 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 dum. I feel good <laughs> It's my anthem. <laughs> I, I didn't want cultural misappropriation, but I yeah. figured. Yeah, no. Talking about get, Western Western can, weddings. Yeah, I could get into that. Uh, Western things. Yeah. This is all new to me, so remember, I can't dance today. Or I'd be, <laughs> I know. Ow, ow, I love ow, it. Ow, yeah. Dancing in my. It's okay. So you're dance. in the wild, wild west. Yeah, I am. I am pretty much as far west as it gets for the most part. And now, was when you were starting to do. The Western weddings, was that just every wedding out there like that is is Western? Or is that just really just what you chose to do as far as that particular type of Western? Or it doesn't really matter to you? It's so I definitely brand myself as a Western wedding photographer, but I don't only do Western weddings. I do Mm. other weddings, but I'd say a majority of them are definitely country weddings or people Mm. that get married in barns and things like that there's a lot of barn venues around here so um it's it's something that i just relate to and that i love and the types of people that um have those weddings usually click with me pretty well so um it's you know i wouldn't say everybody's doing it there's definitely city more cityscape venues oh is there uh yeah, because yeah, out here, like I, you know, like we were talking, there's nothing like that mm-hmm. out here on the East Coast. So that was so interesting to me, and and um, of course I was like looking through your your Instagram, and I 
I, and this isn't helpful for people kind of like at home at all. But mm-hmm. who cares about those people? Right. This is all about this is all about me, <laughs> right, Sarah? Right. And my and my like curiosity. So I'm sending you the little link. I had these in the notes. Like you can click on that. Yeah. Like these pictures that were in there. Like this is just so like so interesting to me, and how this is typical of what you what you do. Like what's going on? And this one, like the good one, the one I like, it was like the fourth one in here. So we're just looking at pictures on our Instagram. I'm going to put these links. Um, in the uh, in the notes for the show, so everybody can see them. But there's like I don't know about five or ten bridesmen or actually groomsmen standing outside this this like mm. structure, and all the guys are in their cowboy hats, yeah. and the women are all dressed up. Is that like typical? Is that like yeah? Like a, uh, so it is. Um, it's something that you, and and not all of them are this like cowboy westerny yeah Yeah, this was definitely like a real good one um she paid so much attention to every tiny little detail and just put so much work into that wedding it was amazing um but i mean the cowboy hats the boots and things like that that's pretty common for weddings that i do um or even just like a barn venue but maybe they're not all cowboyed up necessarily it's just more the location Mm. um but yeah sometimes you get these really really awesome real ranch wedding you know is that a venue like are there western venue or is that really just like somebody's farm so or or something there are like westerny um venues but that Mm -hmm. particular wedding was um it it is a venue now but they're kind of up and coming so it's their friend's private property that they are using it yeah they were just using it and even that next picture like the the fifth one with that bride that's like just like a stunning Mm -hmm. and she has that like jade necklace on yeah yeah that's just like like yeah it's like a picture you can put like on your wall and uh-huh. have it for just like a lifetime <laughs> yeah it's yeah her every single detail that she had was just so well thought out and mm. I it love... looks like a lot of, and even the next one well that that lay flat type mm-hmm. you know with the jewelry and, and stuff in there everything is it's almost like it doesn't look real it looks yeah. like they have like a <laughs> hollywood set designer or somebody come in and and pick out all the stuff that it goes so yeah. well yeah, I definitely would say like turquoise jewelry and like well, turquoise. I said jade yeah, leather. Yeah. yeah, like all the leather accessories. Like that's her um, garter in the mm-hmm. corner there. You know, she had like the leather garter, a leather bouquet wrap. Um, and those things are pretty. Those are like staples, I would say, in like a Western wedding. So really, like yeah. a leather kind of a uh, interesting. Yeah, it, that's that's something you wouldn't find. Yeah, uh, it's like different. A, I would. I, I guess there are people that make those. Mm-hmm. Like they do out there. And yeah, that, and that there was one other photo I just saw before. I wanted to send. Out, so I'm going to send you another one, yeah. and I want you to tell me: Is this safe? <laughs> what the hell is going on? Uh, here's another oh man, one. I'm scared now. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, ah, again, safe. <laughs> again, boring for Got people it. at home. Fun yeah. for me. Right. Now, yeah. this picture, So I don't know if it's the same. There's a. will explain what's going on mm-hmm. here. There's a bride and a groom. I guess it's a bride and a groom yeah. and kissing. Mm-hmm. And it looks like they're standing inches from like a multi-thousand pound <laughs> bull, I guess that is, with horns that are probably mm-hmm. three feet long. Mm-hmm. Like on each side. Yes. So this, um, it is safe. So this is one of those venues it's not safe. that was. This is well. It's not. I guess I should. I should preface that. I guess way. you're used to it. It's or you're... not always safe. Um, <laughs> I would not recommend. That it looks people, fun. Yeah. I'm I would, not trying to say. <laughs> I would not recommend that people just go out and if you see. So those are Longhorn uh, cattle. So if you go out and you see a Longhorn, don't just don't, like don't go out. And yeah. take a picture next to it don't just assume that it's safe um especially if there is bulls like that one was a female so um but if you have a bull which is a male um they're a little more aggressive or can be um but this is a, a venue that you can get married at um 
and it's a stunning venue, but um, they are friendly. So that that particular one that you're looking at in the front, her name is Princess. So, um, yeah, right. Um, but yeah, so it's it's safe. The owners were out there with us, and you know they kind of tell you like, okay, that one's like maybe not the most friendly one. So just don't. But they'll like, guide you through. Yeah. And say, yeah, this isn't a bad mood today. You can kind of. Yeah, it wasn't stand. like we just hopped a random fence and ran out there and. <laughs> Looks fun. Yeah, this for the looks, gram. Yeah, do for it the for gram. the gram. <laughs> and I'm guessing you have to like. There's a lot of landmines out there too. You got to navigate. Mm. And oh you yeah. Don't want to get that bridal dress. Mm-hmm. And... No, but that that's. Uh... That's why you have boots. <laughs> right. well, there you go. I guess so. You can hose them down. Right. Like, exactly. Uh, You're good. Afterwards, but yeah, that's something you just don't find in a big part of the. And it's just like so interesting. That's such a uh, um, a great type of a of a wedding and it just looks like it's really fun. You see now I was just talking uh, earlier to a, um, another wedding photographer here out, not too far from where I am mm-hmm. and out in the East coast, especially I guess in, and, and this is not the case for everybody, but there's these very super fancy schmancy, very formal. And that's not like my stuff, you know, marble and yeah. all this kind of ele- like over the top kind of a, of a things. And you don't find, too many um anything like that and then the 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 topic really was a little bit that you know that that fancy schmancy thing isn't for everybody you know you know it to me it's not genuine i would never have anything like that but i guess there's a growing group of people and i guess this depends on where you are in the country who you know it's not necessarily about having the it's more like your personality is more important than it is having some showy super kind of place that really isn't like fit your your kind of personality so yeah it's you know it really is I think a personality thing and some people you know want the like you said like the black tie very fancy Mm, wedding and some people just want to have it be a fun hangout like (laughs) backyard that looks like a lot more fun to me me are there like big barbecues and stuff like sometimes people do like you know bonfires afterwards and people camp out like it's way more a lot better than rubber chicken sitting in a in a a, uh, in a hall no you know it's also the same now the first dance with the bride everyone goes oh you know but it's all very structured and you know it's just you've seen it a million times Mm -hmm. let's let's get on with it yeah now the other question i had too Mm -hmm. is are all of these people like really cowboys or Mm -hmm. is it like someone like me like a doofus that just goes out and says, yeah, I want a cowboy wedding and I just get a hat and, you know, people have these type of weddings where they're really not like <laughs> cowboy or Western or anything. How does, how does that break down? Yeah. So I would say it's a little of both. Um, so some of the weddings that I do are, you know, they're the type of people that, you know, they love country music. They drive mm. pickup trucks, you know, they, that's more you know, they, they, even if they don't live on like a ranch, you know, they just love that lifestyle. lifestyle. Um, which is fine. Totally. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't say all of them are like true cowboys. Um, but I've done weddings, you know, multiple weddings where, you know, they're either professional rodeo cowboys or they're, you know, actual real ranching cowboys and, and things like that. So it's, it's kind of a mix. Um, but, you know, and like I said, some some have horses, some have cows, some have nothing. <laughs> um, I, I would ride my horse to the, to the wedding. Yeah. That wedding, yeah. Do they ride up on their horses and, and stuff? I have yet to do a wedding where they actually rode down the aisle. And I think just because... I don't mean down the aisle, but I mean like right. go to the wedding or ride up on your... That would be cool. Your... I haven't had that yet. But oh, yeah, if anybody right wants that, hit me up because I'm down for it. Or they can ride on that big bowl. Right, that yeah. Oh, that'd oh, be oh. even... There you go. That's living on the edge. Yeah, that's really yeah. living on the edge. <laughs> but it's great. And I guess your geography, in part, mm-hmm. you know, dictates that type of a wedding. And that's probably a bit indigenous to the people in, in that in that area. And it really looks fun. It just looks like a great time to do that. But that's not the only style of wedding that's going on out there or what you do. No. So I don't live... so. I'm from a a small town. I currently don't live in a super small town, but I still do a lot of like the rural weddings and areas and stuff. Um, But, you know, even with that, it's not like your 
six hours away from salvation or, you know, like, yeah, yeah, it's not like, um, you know, civilization is so far away from where you're at. Um, but there's, there's definitely a lot of open space where I am. It's just, you know, everything's a little more spread out. Um, you still have all your, your main stores and everything, but it's just not all like right next door to you. Um, it's a different way of life. It is. Yeah. And the people, I think they were really like your Instagram because it's so, you know, all these photos on here of that, that style of wedding yeah. and so forth. And your horse, <laughs> you and your horses. Me and my horses. Got a couple of horses out there. So you're out here, you can't have horses again. There's no room. <laughs> yeah, no room for them. <laughs> yeah. No room in New Jersey for horses. Yeah. So that's great though. And that's, um, was when you first started to do weddings, was that like the first style that you that you did so no actually and it's funny because you know I had grown up with horses I've always ridden horses and like western lifestyle I really loved but I wouldn't say that when I first started I was like fresh out of high school and Mm. I didn't really know what I was doing and I kind of just latched on to what other people were doing and Mm. what I thought like okay like that's this person's successful and they're doing this type of wedding. And, you know, at that point it was like all these adventurous like elopements were really, really popular and people are hiking to the top of a mountain and getting married and all that. And I thought, okay, that's what I have to do to be successful. But when I really think about myself, I'm like, I don't actually want to hike to the top of a mountain. People are like, climbing to mountains? Yeah. To I don't, Goodness. you know, I, that's just not I'm really. I'm missing out. I don't know about any of this stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's definitely like the adventurous elopement thing is really popular. And that was really popular when I started. And I tried to brand myself to be that, but I, I didn't you find much think. success because I mm. just that wasn't me. Like I wasn't, it's not something that I just go do in my free time. So yeah, yeah, I guess I don't have that here either because there's no mountains. We don't have mountains. We just have very flat swampy (laughs) areas. But yeah, so I, I definitely started off just taking what I could get and you know, whatever that looked like. Um, but slowly started to realize, okay, like there are people like me that love this Western industry and people are getting married out on ranches and doing things that I would want to do. And so I was like, well, if there's one of them, there's probably multiple of them. Mm -hmm. So kind of just pushed for that. And now that's a majority of what I do. Yeah. And you just found your thing. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think that's like the normal course of people when they start taking photos, you know, the first they're taking flowers and they're taking their dog and they don't know what their direction is. And you may think it's one way Yeah, and then you may find yourself taking a turn and you're like, wow, this is what I really like to do. So you've, you've, you've found that direction and Mm -hmm. some people maybe never find yeah. that direction. So you're having a good time doing this. I guess um, the one thing is, are, are a lot of these outside? So is weather always a consideration so with this? So for this area, I mean, we're kind of blessed with pretty nice weather. Oh, that's true too. Um, yeah, I guess it's... So, also. you know, a lot of weddings I do too. Like I'm in Nevada, but a lot of weddings I do are over in California because it's a short drive, but... It doesn't rain <laughs> <real>. It like <laughs> hardly rains. Or... Once a year. <laughs> yeah. yeah so I, that was a dumb question yeah. on my part. So, yeah, I mean, our you know, wedding season goes, I mean, springtime, there's a little more of a risk for rain, but Mm. fall is very popular for weddings. I mean, it's usually you don't even have to really think about rain until November and then maybe until March. And then after that, you're usually, it's kind of hit or miss here and there maybe for the next two months. But yeah, once you're into end of April, early May, it's pretty much sunshine and nice weather. (laughs) Yeah. And I guess you're, the season is much longer there too, Mm -hmm. because again, East coast or Northeast, especially if something is going to happen outdoors, you have a real narrow window, you know, you maybe have May, June, July, August. And, you know, so it's, but there, I guess you can have much more year round and, and it's not too see, like the, the funny thing is in New Jersey here too, suddenly we've become a subtropical zone and like every day here this summer was like 98 degrees to 100 degrees and like 200 percent humidity and you can't even go outside because it's so 
like hot and, and gross. Is it too hot there? Like, because it looks deserty. Is that can be an issue where it's too hot it, it, for people? It can be. Um, I just did a wedding last weekend and it was 105 degrees. Oh my God. So it was a little toasty. Well, there goes my Western wedding. Yeah. Unless like, maybe I'll have to do it in the fall yeah. or the winter when it's. I think October is a good year or a good time of year to get married around here. Mm. It's, you know, not too hot and you don't usually have to worry about rain, but it's usually, you know, Seems to be a more comfortable temperature. Um, but yeah, it's but people can go indoors. I guess there's indoor venues, yeah. And so forth it's for the... you know, it's usually really hot in the first part of the day, and a lot of the venues, you know, they get ready on site, and so they're in air conditioning mm. rooms or things like that. But and then they walk out, yeah. The ceremony is usually the hottest part, but once the sun starts to go down, it's not too bad. And once people start having a few drinks, yeah, it doesn't matter, you're anyway. fine. Like, <laughs> yeah, oh. right, exactly. Now, are people packing at these weddings? <laughs> Sometimes out, out there. Sometimes it really People walking around. So <laughs> I'm guessing there's not. You don't have to worry about trouble. People no. are well armed. Some, yeah, I've done guns or done guns. Seen <laughs> weddings where At they the weddings. all had guns. Like all the groomsmen mm. carried like pistols and mm. stuff like that. But um, I mean, I'm sure some people are carrying. But it's you know, like the, I just did a wedding too, where the bride and groom gave each other a gun as a gift. Like they both didn't know they were doing it, and they both gave each other a gun as their wedding gift. Oh, so. and it's like surprise! Oh, I got you the same thing, monogram. Yeah, we both like, got each other. Uh, yeah. 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 And that's that's just, again, that's part of that, I guess, that culture out there mm -hmm. and that, yes. uh, and yeah, that lifestyle. Very... Yeah. And that's where people have to understand, yeah, in different areas of the country, things, the way people live are, are, are very, very different than, uh, than others. And that's why you're, you know, you just have to understand that. Oh, and yeah. as far as what has been the effect out there with, the, the the virus situation has that been an impact for you guys or like here it's been devastating yeah but, you know certain parts of this country haven't really had much of effect whatsoever so what's it been more out in, in nevada yeah so things have definitely shut down or they did i mean it's it's not as bad in nevada as it is in like california where i know they mm. really shut down a lot um but it was, you know, one of those things where, you know, when this whole thing first happened, it was a lot of people got scared and started and moving. And they didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. So I had, you know, spring weddings move to the fall. Right. Um, and then, you know, summertime kind of rolls around. And I think people were like, all right, like, let's just, you know, let's, let's life, go yeah. on here. And I did a few weddings and then it kind of got scary again. And people weren't really sure, like, OK, what should we do? Mm. But I think now and, and being that a lot of the weddings I do are either on private property or they're just in rural areas, you know, people are just saying, like, come at your own risk. Like, you know, we're we're still going to do it regardless. <laughs> like we're going to get married. So. Um, you know, it is, it's kind of a matter of opinion. I know people have different thoughts yeah, no, on it, but you're right. It's their personal, um, you know, and because there could be some areas, especially if it's, there aren't a lot of people, yeah. I think life is probably going on. Yeah. And every like wedding normal. that I've gone to recently has had hand sanitizer and masks mm. and, you know, they, they still provide everything for, you know, people that want it and things like that. But yeah, I think, you know, it's, it really just depends on where, how you I feel. I think if it's outdoors, if a big part of it's yeah. outdoors too, I think you're probably okay. Exactly. It's, uh, yeah. If it's, so. if it's outdoors, but yeah, that's been an, I guess something everyone's had to deal with mm -hmm. this year as far as rescheduling and, mm -hmm. you know, people were very scared at first and, yeah. you know, out here they've been locked up, you know, they wanted to keep you locked in your house for like weeks and yeah. months. You know, I was saying before, I thought this was going to be done in a couple of weeks and. Oh, I know. Yes, Yesterday, I was hearing somebody, I think it was on the radio or I forget where on the news somewhere saying, we may be dealing with this for two years. And you're like, oh, my God, two yeah. years of uh, being. You <laughs> Can know. you imagine? I just I don't think people are going to put up with it for that long. Honestly, no. I just. And if, th you know, there's that level of personal safety, you yeah. know, like I think when people feel like eh, this isn't much of a threat, they're going to like not where they're going to start to go back to do what they, right. you know, if they're not seeing that evidence of people getting ill, especially out here, like we were like the first and the worst hit out in New Jersey. And then basically this whole state was like shut down. Yeah. No, there wasn't a car on the road and it was bad. It was a lot of people sick. And, uh, mm -hmm. but now I think there's very few cases. You don't hear about it much anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I think right. when that starts to be not in the forefront so much, people will start to, get back to I think so living too. their lives. I think it's going to oh. slowly 
get back to normal hopefully <laughs> yeah so but on to happier yeah. on to happier things and today we were going to talk a little bit about social media mm-hmm. and why people should be on social media not just posting photos on on social media but you mean putting your own face out there mm-hmm. and how that is important to growing your photography business so we were going to get into a little bit about that yeah and why is that important yeah so I think with you know photographers especially a lot of us tend to think that showing our work um just you know can stand on its own and and for some people it can you know some people all they do is just post pictures of their work and they get really big and they're super successful doing that. But for people that are just starting out and, you know, they have a hard time getting traction in their business or things like that, I think they they lose the importance of what it means to actually show up on social media because you have to think about what social media is used for and it's it's to be social, you know, it's to, right, to get to, to interact know. With you. Yeah, 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 people want to get to know you. And so I think... You you know, as a photographer, you know, there's places to really, really push your work and and your business side of things, you know, like your website and things like that. But your social media is, of course, show your work too. But that's where people come to learn about you. That's oftentimes where they're going to find you as a person and kind of get that behind the scenes look at your business. So I think it's really important to be showing up so people can kind of get that deeper level connection with you. Yeah, and I don't think that's always everyone's first thought, too. It's just about put my photos, put my photos, Mm -hmm. put my photos. And it's probably an afterthought if that, you know, if they start to to want to put their own faces Mm -hmm. on there. And so even somebody who looks like me, even this scary face, (laughs) I should be... I, I think so, you know, I th- and it's it doesn't have to be anything super wild. You know, I know a lot of photographers, we like to hide behind our cameras. You know, I think it's fun. There's there's typically photographers out there that will trade um, like content shoots with you. You guys just go out and have a cup of coffee and take a couple pictures of each other. And, you know, that way you can post a picture of yourself and just start listing off some fun facts or even showing up on your stories. I think videos are really powerful in business right, right, right. now. And- Instagram stories are, are good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think so I should be out there just like videoing my face. I, and like, Hey, everybody just wanted to pop in today. And yeah, I mean, but you're right. Yeah. Like a you're minute right. a day of just showing up and saying, this is what I'm doing today. Like, hope you guys are having a good day. Like it doesn't have to be anything super crazy. I think just getting on and creating that interaction with people um, is going to create engagement. And, and again, people are going to recognize your face and they're going to start to feel like they know you better. And people tend to buy from people that they know or feel like they know. So I just think, yeah. That's and there's important. so many people that take pictures. So the difference between you and everybody else is it's yourself <laughs> agreed. Yeah. I mean, and that's, that's a huge one, you know, and I tell people that too, is if there's a photographer whose work is relatively similar to yours and maybe their pricing isn't too far off from yours, what's making, you know, that client choose you over that other right. photographer. Right. And a lot of times it's, it's you, it's just what you have that makes you different, you know, who you are as a person. So I think it's super important. Yeah, I agree with you. And people probably don't do that enough because maybe they feel that, you know, that Instagram again is about their photos and that's what's selling everybody. But I think now as far as as a as a mix, you know, would you say how often should I be put in my and more in in the the stories or or just in the news because you have a lot of great photos of you in your regular feed Mm -hmm. too. So, yeah. So, I mean, I definitely do it pretty often, but I mean, kind of a general rule of thumb is like when you're on Instagram and you first go onto someone's profile, you tend to see like the first like nine tiles or squares. Um, I think for every at least nine squares, you should have your face in there at least once. Um, Obviously, if you do it more, there's that's better, in my opinion. Um, And I've tested this where, you know, usually a picture of my face will actually get more engagement than a picture from a wedding, unless it's like some crazy, super cool wedding or whatever. But on average, a picture of you is going to do a little bit better um, than than even just like a regular shoot. And um, so I think 
people that just shows people want to see you they want to yeah know. yeah yeah you're right because i think you're selling your and if people like you that's just really mm-hmm. the next year's like oh yeah i like her i like her personality she seems like somebody i would really want to do my work and right yeah and just talking about yourself and 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 you know like i said fun facts about you and and you can mm-hmm. go on and provide value or whatever to to brides and grooms as well but really just showing up and staying consistent and staying front of mind um and it, and stories are really powerful um yeah. because they're you know the algorithm obviously with the feed is all over the place but stories are chronological currently so if you post like you know, on your stories once in the morning, once in the afternoon and once in the evening, you're always kind of jumping to the front of people's stories. So, um, you know, even throughout the day, they're subconsciously like seeing you throughout the day. And and, and, I, th- and I think, too, it's a little bit more informal there, maybe in that story. Yeah. So if you're out somewhere, hey, you know, I'm out getting a cup of coffee or something, yeah. and, you know, you, you could put something like that in there. And oh, I love my Starbucks. And oh, yeah, it, those kind of things make you a bit more relatable to um um, to people, but I guess as, as you mentioned, like in your note here, the, mm-hmm. the point too is this is all about creating engagement. It so is. maybe you want to like elaborate on that a little bit more. Yeah. So um, you know, I think that's kind of the, a, a really big thing on on Instagram and social media in general is is trying to build that relationship with people. And a lot of times, you know, people are like, well, I don't know what to say. Like, what if nobody replies to me? Um, And people have to get used to you asking them to do things. And I think that translates all the way up until the point of selling. You know, people have to get comfortable with the idea of you saying, hey, I have this offer or this product for you. Like, come buy it. Um, And if you start doing that on social media, even just on simple things like, hey, like, this is what I'm doing today. I'm going to the grocery store. Like, you know, this is my favorite whatever cereal, what's your favorite cereal? You know, it's, it feels a little silly and maybe cheesy, but you know, but if it's you and it's genuine, yeah, it's something you know, that, I, I, yeah, that you don't want to go too far, but right. you know, I think that's super helpful mm-hmm. to do, to do stuff like that. Yeah. And just have people like learn a little bit about you. And heck, if you talk about your love for Captain Crunch cereal and somebody oh, who told you <laughs> some, crunch crunch berries right? that's all the, crunch berries that's the best um but yeah i mean who knows i've had people book me as a wedding photographer because i talk about my love for my dog and they're like you know what you're a dog mom i'm a dog mom like let's do this i'm like okay yeah, yeah and it's just, <laughs> and you don't know and you're you're never going to please everybody right but you know like being yourself, um, you know, and, and I think that is really uh, what people need to do. And that, that is super helpful in, in, in that instance. And something I don't do enough, um, just not having the time. Mm-hmm. But I guess it's something you really need to make the time. Mm-hmm. And that Instagram, like I always say, is like a part time job and it get is. in there and start interacting with your people and commenting on their photos and, yeah. and writing these stories about yourself. Uh, it really helps in long term. Exactly. Probably not going to see a result overnight. True. But yeah. you got to keep it up, right? It is something, it's definitely a matter of consistency. And like I said, you know, people might not, you know, be commenting all over the place on your posts in the beginning because they're not used to you asking them to interact with you. But right, if, right. if you're doing it too, and, that, and that's a key thing too, you can't expect people to engage with you if you're not engaging back. So just be a human being, you know, Good if point, somebody yeah. DMs you or if somebody comments on your post, like take the time to say thank you, to respond back to them because that goes a long way for people um to to feel like you're a real human being on the other side right. of that you know yeah because i think you're right and and there's there's a point where it's not a person on the other side mm-hmm. there it's just a picture and you have to bridge that that connection and yeah. make it seem a little bit more personal and i think that's a big key in winning those battles and and getting those people to, to contact you oh She's, she's not so scary or she's not so scary. Or I thought he was right. such a fancy person or a fan, I could never talk to someone like that. And they may be like, oh, she likes dogs just like me. Yeah. And you made the point about, you know, being real on stories. It's a little less formal, you know, because I think everybody kind of gets caught up in wanting your feed to look really mm. perfect and, you know, have everything yeah, go together. Yeah. And so maybe and but, you know, that's kind of like a highlight reel of, OK, here's all these really pretty photos. But your stories is like, look. I didn't put makeup on today. I'm wearing right, sweatpants I'm all day. Like I'm real, just like you. Here I am, you know. So I think that's that kind of stuff really goes a long way, for sure. And how often? How often should people be doing that um, and getting on there? You know, I think 
in, I mean, ideally every day, but I know that is, uh, you know, kind of takes some time to get used to and maybe f- to get a good routine going. So, I mean, I would say as far as posting on your feed, like in general, you know, three times a week would be nice if you can get a post up. Um, yeah. And then your stories, like I said, if you can just post a story one minute a day of, you know, rather... It doesn't take long. Yeah, just first mm-hmm. thing in the morning mm-hmm. or at night or whatever's most convenient for you to just pop up and say, hey, how's it going? Like, this is what I'm doing. What are you guys doing today? And, and Instagram mm-hmm. makes the engagement thing pretty easy. You know, they have all those different things you can put on your stories, like the little... I like the music. Yeah. I always like finding a little song and putting it yeah, on there. Yeah, songs, the yeah, little question fun. boxes, the polls, like all of that stuff, you know, and the more people that engage on that and actually click on it or use those features, the more it tells Instagram, like, this is important content because people are engaging with it and it's going to start sending it out to other people and, and boosting that. So more eyes get on your stuff. So that's kind of, you know, what we all want is to get more eyes on our profiles and to look at our work and, and to, to, find us and see us. So, um, creating engagement, even with small followings. And I think that's another issue. Um, a lot of people have is, Oh, I have a hundred followers. Like I, I, yeah, yeah, like, (laughs) right. And it's like, no, if you, if you're not doing it with a hundred followers, you're not going to do it when you have 10,000 followers, you're not going to do it when you have, you know, 50,000, you know, you have Mm. to, to treat that, you know, and I always like to use the comparison of if you had, your number of followers standing in a room right in front of you and you had to get on stage and talk in front of them. Like, even if it's 20 people, that's a classroom, you know, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. That's yeah. still a good amount of people that you're having to, to speak to. So, um, you know, don't, don't let your numbers, that number above your name, you know, get caught up in your brain, you know, don't let that hold you back from, um, t- from showing up and, and providing value to people. So. And one thing I, I see, more maybe in stories mm-hmm. that if I look at other photographers are there, I always see people trying to sell things mm-hmm. like here's my special and this special. And, and to me, it doesn't seem like the place for sales, mm-hmm. you know, on there. What are your thoughts on, on just being you or presenting your work versus it always trying to sell somebody something? So, yeah, I think it's, there's a time and place for it, but I think the people that if all you're ever doing is selling and you're just going on and sell, 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 yeah. you're going to turn people away. You're going to turn yeah, people yeah. off. So, you know, my big thing is serving people before you ever sell them, serving them free value, providing information to them that's helpful and, you know, whatever your business is, but for photographers, you know, if you are in the wedding industry or whatever industry, you know, um, providing brides with tips for planning their wedding and things yeah. that, you know, maybe as a photographer, yeah, you're not a wedding planner, but you have insight to things or tips and tricks being a photographer that you know of, you know, the best lighting to shoot in and things that people might not know. You find useful mm-hmm, yeah. to talk about to those be more things. of a resource. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think the sales will, will come, come later, but it's all about yeah. building a relationship, you know, and I've used the the analogy too of like you wouldn't just walk into a bar and walk up to someone and ask them to marry you. You <laughs> speak for yourself. <laughs> yeah, right. Maybe you would. <laughs> someone but, like me, yeah. that's my only shot. Maybe you would. <laughs> All right, but you mean most people. Most people. Except the person you're talking. All right, go ahead. Proceed with your right. keep keep talking. <laughs> yeah. Most people would not. But you know, you you go in and you're gonna, you know, maybe sit down, have a conversation, right. you're gonna date them for a it's while. It's a dating process. Yeah. Right, exactly. And then eventually Actually, once you feel like you like them and know them, hopefully mm-hmm. love them, then you'll marry them. But, yeah. um, you know, it's and that's how I feel about business is it's all about creating a relationship. You're not just meeting some random person on the Internet and saying, hey, like, hire me to Here's be a your, bunch of money. Yeah. yeah hire yeah, me to be your wedding one. Way. Yeah. You wouldn't just yeah. tell them to do that because. And that's not that's obvious weird. to a lot of people mm-hmm. either. You know, it's just uh, and especially, I think, too, in, in the wedding business or any kind of a if, if you're just talking in terms of photography where you're selling a high ticket item, yeah. you're talking could be in the thousands of dollars. Nobody just pops up and says, I want to hire you. Here you go. Mm-hmm. There is usually a bit of a process of convincing that person in one form or another mm-hmm. that you are worthy of, of that money. And it's, it's, you know, it takes a while. It does. It's, it's a relationship that, you know, 
unless you get lucky and it's a referral, like I was right. talking to some, you know, oh, you did my friend so-and-so's wedding and we want you. But if it's just someone who shows up, uh, they're like, all right, I got to find out about this person before I'm handing over this money. Exactly. Because it is. It's a good chunk of money that they're paying to have you there. And it's it's a really, mm. you know, if it is their wedding, it's usually a really important day of their life. Yeah, that's right. So and that's they don't right. want just any Joe Schmo off the street. Like they want to make sure they know you and trust you. And, you know, mm. you're going to be with them during some pretty intimate moments moments of their day so it's you know with giant steer yeah exactly you know it could be you guys could all get rammed together like right. <laughs> you got to make sure that, that they want to know are you going to take the horns yeah, if it comes down right, for it yeah you got to take the, the, <laughs> yeah exactly throw yourself like in yeah front the of them. secret service takes the bullet you got to jump right? in and take the uh, so they they need to know you're that kind of a person Sarah. exactly so that's, that's yeah that's what's important that's there <laughs> yeah. but also when it comes to um using Instagram and it could be a big branding tool yeah. for, for photographers. And I know you wanted to talk a little bit about that as mm-hmm. well, because that's a, another thing that takes a lot of work and, you know, whether you do it yourself or you're hiring somebody to create these, these images for you, I don't think people focus on that necessarily as much as they should. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and it does go along with just showing your face and that's definitely part mm-hmm. of creating your personal brand. But, um, you know, I think, people, you know, think, okay, I have this photography business, which yes, that is your business. But again, what makes you stand out is your branding. And so, you know, I like to tell people, you know, the easiest way to kind of get into that idea is to pick like five topics. And we call these your brand pillars. And they're kind of just like, five topics that you're always going to kind of circle back to, you know, if you don't know what to talk about in a caption or you don't know what to post about, um, it just kind of helps guide you along. And, you know, this can, they don't all have to do with your business. So if you are a wedding photographer, you know, one of those things can be wedding photography tips and you provide education to brides to be, but you know, other things just have to do with you. Like if, you know, your dog is a huge part of your life and you know, that can be one of your pillars. You talk about being a dog mom and how it was Mm. getting your dog and you know, whatever, Uh, there's a billion things you can talk about regarding your dog. And, and those are things that, you know, Again, it has nothing to do with your business per se, but it has to do with who you are. And if you're, you know, putting that out on social media, like maybe somebody finds you on social media because of your love for your dog and they follow you because you talk about your dog and then eventually they have to get married or they know somebody getting married and now they're like, oh, you know what? Like, I totally know of a wedding photographer, but they found right. you because of your dog. dog. <laughs> so no. it's just, Who knew? yeah, it's kind of a different way to like maybe grow your audience to to different people that are, you know, they, they're leads that don't even necessarily have to do, you know, they might not have been looking for a wedding photographer, but they find you and now you come to the front of their mind anytime they think about their dog and now they need a wedding photographer for something. No, you're right. I think you have to come down on something. You have to sort of stand for something or, or, you know, you have to be about, about, about something because otherwise again, I think people sometimes are worried maybe turning off, but then Mm -hmm. when you stand for nothing, I think you kind of are saying nothing Agreed. on another aspect. So what are some good things that you can use to kind of be like your pillars as you, as you call them? Um, yeah. So I think it's can be either where you're located. If you, you know, maybe live in like a cool area, you can talk about just what it's like to live there. I mean, some people, Mm -hmm. you know, if you live in Hawaii, like a lot of people would love to just learn about what it's like to live in Hawaii. Um, or, you know, if you, if you're, involved in a sport or you have another hobby outside of photography or your business, you know, um, maybe you love knitting and you talk about that you do that, you know, just, mm. it can be hobbies, locations, something that's important to you, yeah, you mean to, food, yeah. whatever it is, you know, your love for Starbucks, you know, anything that you feel really represents you. And if you don't know, if you're like, Oh, I have a, I'm just a boring average person. Like, I don't know. Find um, something. Find something. And it doesn't have to be anything super crazy. You know, like I said, it. so many people love Starbucks, but they connect with other people when they're like, oh, yeah, this is my favorite Starbucks drink. And they're like, me too. You know, they, they just. Right. They, and then you can. Right. It's a connection mm-hmm. that you can make with someone. I, I think you need to be genuine about that. Absolutely. Because me, I don't drink coffee, so I'm not going <laughs> to go 
posting cup is me of holding my and that's uh, my cup. that's exactly what it is don't and and you know that kind of goes back to me when I first started and I was trying to say oh yeah like let's go on this crazy adventure, adventure. up a mountain hanging off a cliff and oh. like I'm totally all about it when in reality that's not me and if people ask me like okay what's the best like mountaintop location to get married at I have no idea because I've never done it you know I mm. just that's not something I do in my free time so that was something I had to learn but when it comes to western weddings like I'm educated educated on Western lifestyle. You know, I, I live it. I could recommend places for you to get different, you know, types of accessories for your wedding or anything like that too, you know, so really figure out yourself and don't pay too much attention to what other people are doing. And if you really are able to like niche down and use your, your branding, that personal brand to, to figure out who you're speaking to, who that ideal client would be for you, um, you know, you're going to be so much happier too. booking like your dream clients versus just people that you don't really get along with. They're not people you'd be friends with in everyday life because you just don't have anything in common. Um, but once you start booking people that you're like, oh my gosh, we have so many things in common. Like we totally would hang out outside of this. You're, it's just, it changes the game. I think so much. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And, and I think that needs to be, I wouldn't do that in every single post. Yeah. Again, oh, maybe, for but, sure. yeah. you know, pop up and talk a little bit about your Starbucks every once in a while or show your dog, hey, here's me and yeah. Fido. And that's why I say go on like a rotation, you know, and, and you could even have it set to where like, okay, Mondays I talk about a wedding tip. Monday's coffee. Yeah, yeah. yeah Mondays I'm going to talk about my coffee or, you know, pop into your stories if you have coffee and say, okay, like here we are. You know, you can make it fun for yourself and, you know, still post pictures of your work, you know, post a picture of that wedding you just mm-hmm. shot. But then in your stories, you're showing yourself editing that wedding while driving drinking your cup of coffee and you know Mm. it's they can all intertwine so you know there's not like one particular right way to do it but i just think yeah it's just important to do it (laughs) just do it what are your thoughts like on you know now live is a big thing Mm. facebook people Mm. are going on live instagram people are going on live and a lot of people are afraid of that it's it's, they're like get up there and they're like mm -hmm. i don't know really what to say yeah so i think that could be helpful what are your you have any thoughts on on using like instagram Mm -hmm. live or or facebook live i think live is a super powerful tool and it's something that i could utilize more as well but i think you know it is it's scary um a lot of people are scared just to go on their stories and that's pre-recorded but live (laughs) is like a whole different thing you know it's you know you're so worried about making a mistake but i think that's where people Mm -hmm go wrong but it's genuine yeah that's what people you know even if you're on live and your dog starts barking or your kid starts crying you know to me people are going to relate to that they're gonna they see Mm. again you're a real person doesn't have to be perfect yeah Yeah. show up live in your messy hair and no makeup or sweatpants or whatever cleaning your house you know i think it's just a matter of showing up and you know no matter what that looks like and people love the real versus if you're sitting Mm. in a studio perfectly primped and everything looks you know amazing people don't relate to that yeah and this i'm I'm repeating myself for like and the third or fourth time I've mentioned this and, and what I was going to say is I um, was looking at a photographer's profile. I don't want to get into the story again, how I found this, but the interesting thing about it, they were selling something. Mm-hmm. So I was curious about, and I was trying to find them. And it was hard to look up their details, but on this person's Instagram profile and they had different kind of, again, I don't want to detail. They were different kind of there were wedding and there were two or three other kinds, but every picture on the profile was just them. Oh, just them in these like millennial influencer. Like everything was smiling. You know, it wasn't real. Mm-hmm. It was just like every staged photo mm-hmm. of this person, you know, sitting at a laptop, smiling ridiculously and holding a coffee cup and smiling ridiculously. Yeah. Nothing was real. Yeah. And to me, first, I don't know why they didn't have pictures on there. It was all just them, yeah. but it wasn't genuine. So I think that even when you're talking about people are worried about being too much themselves, mm-hmm. going the opposite way, I don't think, to me anyway, that's not such a great thing either when everything is staged and phony and it's, no. you know, I'm working so hard yeah. at my laptop, but yet I have a giant smile on my face. But this is really me. Exactly. You know? And I mean, I was like, and that's the thing is like, yeah, sure. It's fun to have the cute, you know, this is me in a really, yeah, yeah, once a, in a really while. fancy coffee shop doing my work. But like in reality, I don't work like that. You know, I'm half no. the 
time. <laughs> and if someone's sitting there with a giant smile on their yeah. face working on photo, I think they're like a crazy yeah, person. I, they're on medication. Yeah. No one sits there like grinning ear to ear like yeah, that. Yeah, I sit or, in my uh, dark cave and I have like a blanket over my head. Like, that's right. <laughs> you know, so I mean, and and people are so scared too. Again, they, they just want to create this image of like perfection, but people don't right, relate. Is, you know, yeah. you post the iPhone photo, you know, as photographers, that's really scary for us too is, oh my gosh, we cannot post an iPhone photo. But you know what? I think just get over it and do it. And you'll be surprised that people don't actually care that much if you post an iPhone photo on Instagram, you know? So if it's of you in a real situation and you're like, this is what I look like today. This is how I'm editing, you know? And 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 it's a a fine line. I think you don't want to be sloppy like everyone and go the opposite extent where you're like, yeah, I'm just so casual because people are like, all right, this is the person I'm going to hire. And they're like, yeah, like (laughs) I think you got to find that that middle ground. Absolutely. you know, and not too much one extreme or just be you. I think exactly. the, the ultimate thing here is just to, to be yourself. Yeah. Don't be like a fake Instagram person, you know, yep. where everything is posed and phony. I know I'm living this crazy lifestyle. I, yeah. That doesn't, I don't think that translates when it comes to business. No, I don't. Know, so much as like being, trying to be an influencer isn't what it isn't the thing, the place you want to operate yeah. in. Yeah. And if you think about it too, if you post all this phony stuff and it's not really you, if you, you know, talk a certain way on social media, but that's not how you talk in real life. What are you going to do when people meet you in real life? You know, they hire yeah. you based off this image that you've put on social media and now they meet you in real life and you're nothing like your Instagram self. So, you know, you don't want to be perceived as something that you're not. Just be yeah, you. Just be yourself. Just be yourself. <laughs> exactly. And then I think you noted here, mm-hmm. the other thing too, is about being um, consistent mm-hmm. with this is, yeah. I guess I I shouldn't be posting like, one post a month. That's not right. Gonna, yeah. So not gonna help me. Like yet. I said, I mean, ideally, if you can do it daily, that would be amazing. Um, I think batch working is really helpful. So you know, I think that's a big struggle. Is a lot of people, you know, think, okay, I have to post every single day, but like, I don't know what to say. You have like a brain fart as you're about to, right. you know, post something on Instagram. Right. So if you know, find what kind of inspires you. Um, for me, it's either listening to podcasts or playing music or going on a walk or whatever that might be for you. But, you know, if sometimes when I'm driving, I just come up with like a really good idea to talk about. And so you can either just like get a little voice recording out and just like say it so you remember it or make a little note or whatever. A voice note, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. and uh, come back to it. But, you know, I just in the notes in my phone, like anytime I think of like a good caption idea, I just write it down. Yeah, and then, yeah. you know, kind of when inspiration strikes. Yeah, yeah. And that way you have like a whole bunch of captions like pre-made. And so when you have to post on Instagram that day, you can just copy and paste it and use that and, you know, put a picture up that looks pretty or whatever picture you yeah, want to use. So. If, if part of it sometimes, too, is people think like, yeah, nothing exciting going on mm-hmm. in my life. Every day I wake up, walk to the yeah. living room, sit down, watch the TV, yeah. get up. Go to bed. Maybe, yeah. Maybe they think there isn't anything going on, but I think you have to find those moments and, and, and yeah. I don't and know. Again, and like, maybe that's why people don't do it. You know, it. again, it's, it's all about remembering that people are in the same position as you. I know that was kind of mm. a big thing right now with, with the whole virus and everybody kind of being yeah. inside is they're Trapped. like, nothing's happening. What do I even talk about? But everybody feels that way. So, you know, I think if you talk about it too much, obviously it can be overwhelming to people too. If you're just like, okay, this is boring. This is horrible. It sucks. People don't want you to just be complaining either, you know, but people come to you to, to either be educated, inspired, or, you know, entertained. So to me, it's like, if your post can, can provide something like that or talk about something totally different. If you don't feel like, okay, today is not an exciting day. I don't want to talk about what I'm doing today. Just come up with something, you know, like I said, use it. Figure out a tip you can share with people for something or, you know, some advice for brides to be or whatever type of photographer you are, you know, just kind of helping people, providing some sort of value to them, I think is just really important. And then th- that's I think always... as, as you do it, it becomes a little easier because mm-hmm. I think your brain starts to get in. It mm-hmm. starts working. And storytelling. So it, 
and yeah, and it just starts to, all right, now I'm going to, and the more you do it, I think it just becomes a little bit yeah. easier and you don't have to think about it. And I think people get bogged down in the, I don't know what I'm going to say thing. Yeah. Whereas me, I don't even think about it. I just, whatever happens kind of, oh, yeah. you know, it just pops into your, into your brain. I mean, so don't think, don't overthink yeah. it. Yeah. And, and storytelling is huge. I mean, it's, it's, you know, when you do post a picture of like a wedding, you know, instead of just, it, it drives me crazy when I see people that just post a picture of maybe this like stunning wedding and then their caption mm. is like, oh, lovers at sunset and like that's yeah. it to me it's like give me more i want to know like who so you like the longer post yeah and it there. doesn't you really like more. it doesn't always have to be like you know three pages long but a little more depth of like who are these people why did they end up there like what's their story like mm. give me more insight on it because i think people want to they want to connect with that and they, they want to learn more and people love to have other people talk about them. <laughs> so, you know, it's just true. We're all kind of narcissistic in that way. We love to talk about ourselves and it's almost like for those clients, if you're posting a picture of them and you're, you're talking about them in their story, mm -hmm. you know, that's really exciting for them and they're going to be likely to share that and then have other people see it. And, you know, right, right, you want right. to create that content. But I think it, writing and it's hard again because writing is hard and maybe we'll talk about a little bit this because instagram isn't the only thing you could be blogs and other yeah. things but people struggle i think with the captioning mm -hmm. it's exactly because they don't know what to say mm -hmm. so they'll put an emoji in there yeah. and hit it because it takes time again it takes time it and effort but i think you know some people pre-write those things out yeah. and copy and paste them uh but i think too the more you do it it, it gets a little bit easier to fall into like a little bit of a pattern. You and definitely, it's not so yeah, you definitely will. The more you practice, the more you do it, just like anything, you know, it just takes practice. Mm. It takes time. And the, I think the most important thing to do or, you know, to keep in mind is just, you know, one, do it, but also be yourself. Talk like yourself. Don't try to go on and sound very like professional and like, pristine if if you're the type of girl that goes on and is like hey girl what's up like talk like that you know right, don't try right. to dear client like how are you today <laughs> like yeah and then people do that because they don't know yeah. and i think over time you, you kind of find out who you are like exactly. you said with the wedding you know you find your path and then and then you once you kind of hit your stride it, it gets a little bit Definitely. a little bit easier but you know, I guess Instagram, maybe not that's not for everybody, right. but th these rules just don't certainly apply to, to Instagram. No, absolutely not. It can, it can be anything. And, and, you know, like I said, there's no one right way to do it. You know, I think it's mm -hmm. kind of all about testing and Instagram's forever changing. So, you know, have you might as well have fun with it and, and figure out what works for you and kind of, you know, try different things, experiment, see what works with your audience and what doesn't, you know, kind of just try your different things out and post different types of content. And, right. and, you know, you never know, something might totally get a ton of engagement that you never would have expected. And, right. you know, then you, then yeah. You know. And I think it's discouraging when people are starting too, because mm -hmm. they think, Oh, no one liked my video. Yeah. No one like, you know, and uh, people use that, I think as a metric, mm -hmm. they take that a little bit too seriously when they, yeah when they shouldn't followers and, and likes yeah. and it, you know, you gotta, you gotta keep doing it. Exactly. At first you're going to be talking to nobody or posting to nobody and do it, you know, or you gotta be consistent and you can't, I don't think you have as a short term, I'm only going to do this for a week. You gotta say, I'm going to put six months into yes. this. I'm going to put a year into this before I evaluate, not just one or two or three mm -hmm. posts because you only got one line. Exactly. On and that's it too, is, you know, tr figure it out, like write it down, you know, <laughs> figure out, okay, I posted consistently three days a week. This is what I talked about. These, this was what kind of interaction I got from that. Or maybe you booked something this month and, you know, because of this post and not because of this one, you know, so you can kind of play around with it. See what works, see what doesn't. But like you said, you know, don't right. just do it once. And if it doesn't work, then give up, you know, try it for a few months and see what happens then, because it's not going to happen overnight. I know everybody no. wants it to, but it's just not how it works. <laughs> um, it's hard. And it, it's a part, I think, of the job that people don't immediately understand. You know, they think they're going to grab a camera. Yeah. People are going to start knocking on their door and it doesn't work that way. And and this has turned into another aspect of a job yeah. that you have to dedicate time to, I think, and people aren't comfortable with this in, in every instance, but you, I think you need to sit down, if not every day, say, all right, an hour a week or whatever it is and dedicate to because so many people. It's like a billion people on yeah. Instagram or something. I don't know what the number is, like 
so many people that you have to be at least have some presence on there because people will find you. As you know, they search those tags, they, Western they, Wedding, boom, who pops up? Sarah, yeah. and she's going to get all the they business. They do. Yeah. Hashtag, I mean, we could go on and on about so many things. But yeah, I mean, it's it's really just, I think when it comes down to it, you know, show your work, show your talent and your craft that you're, you've worked so hard. And have fun with but, it. I think that's a part of it, too, is just have fun. Mm-hmm. Don't make it so like a chore. Yeah, exactly. Ha- yeah. Totally have fun, you know, like I said, try different things, figure out what works for you because it's not always going to be what worked for everybody else, you know. Right. So, right. super important. So, do you think I should go on Amazon today and buy some boots? <laughs> Start Heck taking yeah. pictures of my boots? Heck you think yeah. that's going to work for you? Can, hey, brides, you can, check me out. You can, my boots, <laughs> boots and boudoir. <laughs> Oh, Western Western Boudoir cowboy hat. That could be a thing. You think think I'm on? I'll fly out. We'll do a Western on the ranch. Right, you could be onto something there. Yeah, that's my little niche thing. Coming soon, 2021. You got it. I love it. That's fun. So we talked about a lot of stuff here today. That we did. And you're doing some education. Mm -hmm. You're taking some students. Yeah. And. What I want you to do is tell everybody where, you know, they can find you, what's going on on your website. Yeah. So it's, yeah, um, it's been. Uh, and I'm going to order my boots while you're. Yeah. Uh, yeah get on next. that. <laughs> um, yeah. No, it's been a really fun year to kind of transition and doing something a little bit different and, and helping other photographers grow their business. I know it's been a wild year. So um, yeah. 2021 is looking bright. Like, um, I, we can I know, hope. let's hope everything goes up from here. But, um, yeah, I, I've been having a lot of fun, um, teaching other photographers, um, how to grow businesses and things like that. And I have lots of fun things coming in the next few months and, and especially in 2021. So, um, you know, the, one of the best places to find me and stay up to date with everything is Instagram. So yeah. that's at Sarah, Jessica dot photo. Um, and then my website is sarahjessicaphoto.com. Um, I'm on YouTube at Sarah Spackman. Um, you have a lot of videos. I, you do good videos thank too. You. See, that's like a lot of work. Thank you. See, I, I could appreciate that, you know, when people going on there and, and doing all that that content and it's good information. Thank to have you. Yeah. So, I mean, all kinds of places. I have a Facebook group, um, the SJP society, and that's where I do a lot of free education for photographers. So, um, you guys can definitely mm-hmm. go on and join that. Um, but yeah, there's going to be some new online courses that are going to be launching here soon. I have, um, plans to do a content creation course and a photography course. So, um, those are all going to be coming soon. So definitely um, stay, stay tuned. tuned, jump on one of those platforms, and you'll definitely be one of the first to know about it. So it's going to be good. Yeah. So who, what are you working on with people lately? So you yeah. on your Facebook lives, like what's going on there a little bit or, yeah. or just with wedding photography or just with photography in general, so, you're helping Yeah, people. I do one-on-one coaching. Um, and mm-hmm. a lot of that is for people that just, you know, it, it varies. Some are brand new photographers that have never even touched a camera really. And so we can do, um, either virtual coaching where we get on just like a, a zoom call and we can talk about your questions. Um, and I also do a uh, full day elite mentoring sessions where we'll meet up in person. We'll sit down and we'll have a conversation, um, about all of your questions. We can go over camera settings, editing, and then I'll actually set from the very beginning yeah, huh? and yeah. I'll set up uh-huh. a shoot for us and we can go out and shoot, um, a styled, you know, couple or whatever. Um, and you can see how I would shoot normally. And then you can get in there and, and take your own photos as well. And, um, we can go over prompting and posing and all that kind of fun stuff. It's a lot to learn. Yeah. It is. So, yeah. and I know, you know, just getting the confidence to do it is, is a big thing. And right, so right. yeah, I've, I've been helping people, you know, just working on marketing strategies once they feel like, okay, like I, I feel like I take pretty good pictures, but now it's a matter of mm. how do I fill up my calendar? How do I actually start yeah. booking? Cause stuff. you don't realize how much you need to know when you're, yeah. and just when you're, if you're fresh and just getting started and you think you've got it, there's always something else. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about this. Oh, I didn't realize this. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't realize I had to know this. So it's, there's so much. And, you know, finding, like I always say, finding a coach mm-hmm. or a mentor is such an important mm-hmm. thing, you know, because they can help you jump years yeah. ahead 
So whatever that cost, whatever that person is charging you, you know, is insignificant into the core, into the, you know, of, of three years of, of not maybe figuring it out on your own. So it's always well, it's well. Oh yeah. That's definitely, that's huge. You know, people don't realize that, but I mean, nothing's, you know, a secret really. You can pretty much Google anything, but the hard part is figuring out what questions do you actually, you know, you don't always know. You see, and it's like, I could Google about, you know, how to ride a bike, but that's not going to teach me how to to ride a bike, you know, until you actually get out there and and do it. So you're right. There are courses and people can find it, but I don't think there's any replacement for me sitting down with you one-on-one or me talking to you and say, Hey, you know, how can I, and then you can walk somebody through that. Customizable that way. You know, we can make, we can make a marketing plan that works for you specifically. So yeah, I definitely love one-on-one mentoring and coaching. So, um, there's all that information's on my website as well, or you can DM me on Instagram. And you have a great website. We were talking, I don't remember if that was even in the record part or not, but, uh, thank you. Um, people need to go look at your website. Thank you. Great website. And you're out there and the wilderness. <laughs> yeah, lots of wilderness and nature and frolicking. Videos of you walking down the, the dusty yeah. roads out with the tumbleweeds, and it's like great though. Thank I'm not you. Like, it's like I'm all about it. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. If you guys want to so, have a boot scooting good time, <laughs> it, that's uh, that's exactly what I was going to say next. That's that was the next word. Like, Something um, super cheesy. out of my mouth there. So, so perfect. See, and oh, here we go. I love it. So, but we had a we, we covered a lot of ground we today. Did. Love it. We learned that I'm going to be buying some boots. Yep. Yeah, I want to see it. And we <laughs> learned that when I do have my Western wedding, mm-hmm. you're going to stand between the bull and I me. Will. I still want to do the shot there, yeah. so that way when they start charging, yeah. I'm going to put I'm going to hold you in I front. Got you. Yeah, yeah. We always got to protect Human the host. Shield. Remember, I'm I'm the most <laughs> I'm the most important it's person agreed. there. Yep. And then you know we we learn. Yeah. That I didn't even know this was a yeah. thing, and this is great. Yep. So now I'm, I'm going to have a Western wedding, and I'm just going to listen to this song for the rest of the <laughs> afternoon. I don't even know what it is. <laughs> That's good. It's very calming. And, and now I understand. <laughs> and I'm just rocking in my exactly. chair. I know we're all, in your we're chair. all swaying. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we both need so, naps. I know. And it's so nice. <laughs> just getting tired, and but we, we were good. And I just appreciate you coming on today. Thank you so much. And learning a little bit about what you do and like I said it's always fun meeting people and and um, seeing what's going on out there and uh, you know I know everybody's busy so I'm always grateful to come in and share yeah and um, the only thing we really have left here to do today is for you just to say goodbye so we can get the hell out of here <laughs> well thank you I really appreciate being here and yeah I hope you guys all you know have a great rest of your 2020 and I hope yeah life gets have a Boot yeah. scooting have a, good have time. A good, yeah, what was my line? <laughs> have a go- boot scooting. Boot scooting good time. There you go. <laughs> That's <Nice>. my signature. <laughs> Put that yeah, on your website. Exactly. <laughs>